Hi, John here. Uh, today, Thursday, 10th of August 2016. Uh, we've got a lot going on at the moment uh, with um, uh, what's happening in Britain and what's happening in America and what's happening in New Zealand. Particularly New Zealand with our flag and our chief and where to from here since um, Obama and Hillary is the main topic on Facebook. It appears that she's starting to falter and he's starting to panic as more of Assange emails are exposed, exposing her. 23,000 emails with a confidential C on it that's starting to be made public. At the same time, we are making public our titles to King William IV, jurisdiction of Admiralty in America and all around the world from the New Britain. Now notice in skimming over all the news every day I do, that um, Scotland is going to head back into Britain because of what's happening with the exit of Britain itself. Uh, Britain itself. It's Nicole, Nicola Sturgeon who is dragged Scotland away from its parent company, the British UK government, Westminster, and the people um, have to make a decision since there are more countries leaving the EU Parliament where the mobsters are ganged up with Obama and the United Nations, NATO, US federal state government and their dollar and pound note of the Rothschild starting to fall. At the same time we have our pound note of King William's Acts, I've just put them on Facebook, you'll read, if it wasn't for King William, America wouldn't be there with their currency and laws. It's still Britain. Right there, I've put the statements there that belongs to this flag and to our native chiefs here in the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court. Chief King Itoto, I'm just about to give him a ring. Uh, we're supposed to have an appointment today, it's supposed to be Monday, it went to Tuesday, to Wednesday, now it's Thursday. See, you see how busy, busy he is and how busy I am. Um, so he's got a lot going on with the Iwis. He has to take both sides in the Queen's Bench court side of the Iwi, Maori, and then he comes over this side with me and the King's Bench Court and Maui. He's understanding how he fits into Westminster under the King Edward line and Queen Victoria Trust, 1848 Trust. She set up for us here, the natives contract that this Queen here is usurping this side of the King's Admiralty Court Martial Law and jurisdiction of banks and trading commerce here. She's usurping here and gone out of Westminster into the EU Parliament where all the drones are gone and followed Nicola Sturgeon and the elite on that side. So there's a clear separation of powers happening now with the Queen jumping overboard, his abandoned ship in Britain. And I see now that when Gordon Brown suggested getting rid of the House of Lords, now I see it back on again on the menu to get rid of the House of Lords. I'm saying yes, get rid of the House of Lords because you've got a king there already that's 
inheriting this flag under King William III. <coughs> he got rid of King James II, Catholics, out of Westminster. King there then, deposed them, then he took over. And then the Bank of England started with him, 1694. You'll see those acts coming into play through the commerce and um, um, the, the laws of King William IV. Um, um, what did he do? He, re re um, he redid the Acts of Parliament and introduced the Bank of England Act, the Pound Note Act, the Gold Coin Act, the Mining Act, and the Declaration of Independence Act 35, that's this flag. He introduced this and that's where the commerce took off into 1868 and then on into where the Rothschilds came in, in 1817, 1833, uh, uh, sorry, 1933, 1917, around then, started introducing and uh, money and took over the Bank of England. This is the Rothschilds. From then on they using these laws of King William IV for their jurisdictions of banks, transfer and so forth, land titles of Admiralty. Now this is where we come into the picture because this is all contract law. The contracts were made in this flag to consolidate all of the wealth from King Solomon's mines through the mining acts and all that all the way through to William the Conqueror, to William, King William the Third, to uh, King George the Third, King of America and his commerce, still going then, still the long line of continuity of sovereignty of monarch end of this wealth inheritance to accumulate under those kings. The Imperial Imperial Laws Act and the King's Commercial Contract Acts that extended through King William the Third. King William the Third um, um, the time that he put the Bank of England Act together, 1694, Patterson Bank, uh, Pound Notes, which we are using online now. You see those notes with Jamie and Maurice Patrick Stewart, with the Patrick name, that's what I've got on Facebook today. The Pound Note, the green one, is overarching the Swiss Indo, which is what the Pope has got control of. He's taken over everything of the eight point stars on this flag and the eight point star on my head, uh, that's the sheriff, and everything derived through the king of England, king of Britain, king of Scotland, king of Ireland, king of Hanover, king William IV. Okay, so he's taken those titles from the queen for their use, his use in the Pope and the Vatican City of London. Rothschilds have usurped this flag and its power, we are seizing off them through our King's Bench Court Marae, Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court, um, with the chief, King Itoro. That's the highest court in the world with this flag. This is the only flag that can do that. It's a commercial trading bank flag of the Bank of England Acts that King William put together. So I'm making this point quite clear that we have the partnership title to use the pound notes and the gold coins. You'll notice we're using bullion vault as our um, gold source of storing uh, that for the members as soon as we open up the website tag pay and also um, open up the company's office under the name Moai 
powerhouse um, group limited in Dover, England. I tried to put it on yesterday, but there's something I'm not doing right filling out the forms. It's 95% finished. And I'm just going to wait for our secretary over there to do it for me from the office there. She's running the office there. And uh, Sue Young. Um, so um, once that's open, we'll kick off the whole pound note, gold coin, water money, pound note currency um, in the shares online. Okay, so that's how we're going to express our authority of the king. I'm just going to ring King Yitoro now and see if we can raise him. Now we've got Moa's going outside. Hallelujah. Right when I'm ringing. Trust them to come today, right when I'm ringing. But anyway, you can have a bit of that. Here's the chief. Busy, are you? That's all right. No, no problem. That's all right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, leave, leave it for now. Plenty of time. Only, only when you got time. Plenty of time. Any time. Okay. All right, team. Fine. Kingy, he's on the radio. See, he's on the radio right here. So, um, I know he's busy, but that's the chief. It all rests in his hands, in the Navy here, to call a meeting between him, the Navy, me and his chiefs of Napoli. Everything I do is Napoli. This is Jamie. Good morning. Going one off. Looking into ambassadorship. Okay. This is Jamie, my private secretary. She's online. You'll see her face and me on the pound note, the green one. 970 million trillion trillion pound note. That note, people, is real in a native title situation that we are operating our business through the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court. Kingi Todor, Chief just on now, he's in charge of that operation as a military, ex-military veteran, war veteran, in his own kingship role to speak on that land that belongs to him and his hapu. That's where my authority with this flag comes from. It is the Napui contract. No offence to any other iwi or hapu. That's how it works. It's business. This flag is all about business, commerce, banking, mortgages, lands, levy, piracy, acts of King West William IV, Westminster, 1830, 1837. You'll see on my Facebook site. I've just dropped them all there. And what it says, a bit of what that means, I'll just give you a little snippet of it from what I've put online. Oh, yeah. I've put, I'll just read it out, what, what I've put there. <coughs> I've put the green pound note there that's got the gold dragon 
the gold dragon on the left, that is the Moai gold coins of King William IV and his inheritance in that all of his inheritance is emperor. Fortune is in that dragon as to the other red dragons, white dragons, green dragons, blue dragons, all the other dragons, this dragon here is a clean cut dragon of the Maui and King William's contract title partnership. Okay, then you've got the uh, coat of arms of Hanover. It's got Scotland, England, and Hanover at the top. Scottish flag, the English flag, Red Cross, and Hanover's at the top. That's the Hanover title in um, um, Devon, England. Okay, in Devon, England. Uh, under the Hanover title. So then we've got what I've said. I said this. Emperor King Solomon's mines, one. William the Conqueror, two. King William the Third, three. King George the Third, four. King William the Fourth, five. King George the Fourth, six. King Britain, UK, Devon, Hanover, London, Westminster, Imperial Law. Those kings are the emperor that I'm talking about inside this flag, wrapped up. And then, the Bank of England originated in a revolution when William III, Prince of Orange, drove King James II from the throne. Since the Bank of England Charter was granted by William in 1694, that's when the Bank of England Act came out, there has never been another revolt against the Crown. The royal family has been secure because the source of money crucial to a revolution has remained under control. That's a statement on this article I've put on. Facebook today. It says MPH consolidating the empire. There we go. Emperors. Just, I just mentioned the emperor emperors. And then another article underneath I've put take note this script from the King of England, not the Queen of America or Brussels. Then it says it like this. This is to American people listening and watching what I say. Take heed of this notice because you're bound to what it says. It says this. The Bank of England has played a prominent role in American history. Without it, the United States would not exist. The American colonists considered themselves loyal Englishmen to a man, but when they began to enjoy unequal, unequaled prosperity by printing and circulating their own colonial script, the stockholders of the Bank of England went to George III, King George III, and informed him that their monopoly of interest-bearing notes in the colonies was at stake. Listen up. He banned the script, with the result that there was an immediate depression in the commercial life of the Americas. This was the cause of the rebellion as Benjamin Franklin pointed out, the little tax on tea, amounting to about a dollar per year, a dollar a year per American family, could have been born. But the colonists could not survive the banning of their own money. 
there. That says it all. Just that little statement there has said everything about how America was born out of Britain. It's a cash cow haven business. America under this flag of these kings I'm talking about. Alright? These kings are in contract with us. The native hapu of New Zealand. Not Maori, but the native hapu, Maui people of New Zealand and Pacific Islands. Okay? They've split them like chickens. The colonial people from Australia with the Rothschilds and their bank with the Ponzi funny money, American money, were the ones that spoilt King George's laws, that they went to him to complain about this spinning this money bit. They're still spinning the money now. That's what we're going to capture with that big pound note. It only takes one note to squash them all. It's bigger than Dan Hur, that green pound note with me and Jamie on. It's not about me and her being a king and a queen. Exactly not. Make that statement here quite clear. <coughs> that it's there because she's a Patrick and I'm a Wanoa inside this king's commercial banknote that we're entitled to use for the very first time since King Tafio, five pound note and one pound note, came out in 1888. It's taken right till now, 2016, to kick it off inside the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court with Chief Kingi Dauroa, military man. Okay, that's what I'm wrapping him up in this contract so that he's got something to go on to recover all the debts that the British military and Navy is liable to recover. All that debt with that note and every other note we've got. A trillion pound on each fraudster's head. They're using guillotines in America. That comes out of this flag law of piracy on the high seas. If you look it up, it, they're using King George III and then King William IV, Acts of Westminster Parliament, 1838-37, for starters, in the modern world when they started the racket off in 1933, by bankrupting America. Okay, so that's where, where the commerce really took off from, 1933. But we are backdating it right back to 1830, King William IV with the Green Pound note. So they're going to have to pay the debts as we, the levy creditor, and they, the people that we name on our Cook Street land as my barrister doing the case on the 15th of this month with me and Kingi Taurua equally charging the Crown here on these lands with treason against John Key and fraud of the banks and the Crown trusts and corporations acting and corrupting New Zealand law in front of the chiefs. Okay, always mainly chiefs, the native chiefs, the legal partner of these king emperors that I've named. Okay, so um, I just a couple of other little clips off the same article. King Charles the third, the second, had managed to retain a shaky position because of support from the Duke of Buckingham, George Villiers and others whose first names formed the word cabal, introducing a new term for intrigue. 
His successor, James II, tried to placate the powerful lords of England, but even his long-time supporters, scenting a change in power, began secret negotiations with the Prince of Orange, William I. William I, Prince of Orange, had been married several times to Anne of Saxony, Charlotte de Bourbon, and Prince de Col Coligny. Today, every ruling house of Europe, as well as those out of power, is a direct descendant of King William, including James Juliana of Netherlands, Margaretha, Queen of Denmark, of Olaf the Fifth of Norway, Gustav of Sweden, Constantine, Constantine of Greece, Prince Rainer of Monaco, Monaco, and Jean, Grand Duke of Luxembourg, whose son married the daughter of C. Douglas Dillon. You see, so they're linked to King William. That's what I'm talking about here in this flag. Although William had married Mary, the daughter of James, King James II, that's the one he booted out of Westminster, and had a legitimate claim to the throne of England, he could not take power as long as James II was on the throne. Therefore, he entered England with the force of 10,000 foot soldiers and 4,000 horse, a small force with which to conquer a great kingdom. With him were Churchill, Bendrick, Benedict, Bentinick the first, Earl of Portland, Earl of Shrewsbury, and Lord Polworth, whose descendant is a prominent member of Anglo-American banking establishment. James II fled to the court of Louis the 15th in France and was declared abdicated. He got beaten. Okay, the Catholic Church got beaten right there by King William the first, second, third, fourth. Okay, so that ends my little um, story. With Jamie online, she's quite um, uh, knowledgeable on a few matters, so she's looking up uh, ambas uh, ambassadors. She's looking up things I'm saying to go and look for. She's very good on research of history uh, of kings and queens and dragons and moths and uh, unicorns and things like that, uh, symbols, uh, cabals and families that um, corrupted the laws of Westminster. Westminster is still considered the highest laws of admiralty in the world that the Pope usurped through the Queen and the Church, Catholic Church and the Protestant Church making decisions amongst themselves politically. So the politics, politics is collapsing around their ears and especially in America. But that's really all I wanted to talk about was um, uh, the fact that um, um, we're just explaining things about where we sit in amongst all of this with King Ernest Augustus, uh, the fifth, you can see he's uh, got the eight-point star badge on him um, with his uh, wife uh, of Monaco, Monaco, Carol of Monaco, Prince, Princess Caroline, Caroline of Monaco, um, Prince Rainier, on that side of the Spanish in the connection with um, the monarch. So the Spanish and the King of Spain and the Queen of Spain is still holding onto our trust. And I'm going to England to replace the Queen as the head of the Queen Victoria Trust for Kingy on this end. I'm going to do his job of being the legal advocate for him and his inheritance title to that trust okay i've got the bank to sort out the bank of england and king william's pound note laws and acts 
to seize on all the fraud debts owed now to the King's Bench Court in this Marae. Okay, so there she is again. Um, Jamie, she's doing a wonderful job as usual. Um, oh, she's um, just put something there. In a less formal sense, the phrase is used for high-profile non-diplomatic representatives of various entities, rarely states, to say I like it, states um, mainly cultural and charitable organizations, often as willing figureheads. This is ambassadors she's talking about. To attract media attention, for example, film and pop stars make appeals to the public at large for UNESCO activities. See UNESCO Goodwill Ambassadors, sometimes during press swarmed visits in the foreign country. In French speaking regions such as metropolitan France, Gallipoli, Gallipoli, Reunion, uh, Reunion, Quebec, and Wallonia, the little, the title of ambassador, personae, is used. Um, for work for peace, edit, one of the cornerstones of foreign diplomatic missions is to work for peace. This task can grow into a light, into a fight against international terrorism, the drug trade, international bribery, and human trafficking. Ambassadors help stop these acts, helping people across the globe. These activities are important and sensitive and are usually carried out in accordance, coordination with the Defence ministry, ministry of the State and Head of the Nation. So that's what an ambassador is. That's the role, role I'm going through Waitangi Marae on their behalf of the Chiefs of Ngāpuhi and the rest of the country here joining in the Maui Power House group of the world through that marae. So that's where our native will congregate on the 28th of October of this year, 2016, as being 182 years of this flag of continuity of sovereignty to those king emperors that we have an attachment contract, private contract, in the commercial banking world and the trade free passage through the world with this flag. You'll notice on our website, moaipowerhouse.com, that we have 250 countries with the flags on it for you to join for a free £25 share against the levy debtors on this flag of jurisdiction of Admiralty Court Martial Law. So that's already in motion. We're just going to open up the website, um, take pay, uh, money transfer system from one bank to another into our bank in London and here in Auckland, New Zealand, ANZ Bank. We've got an ANZ Bank there in London where it will link up with Moai Powerhouse Group Limited Company registered in the company's house in London with our secretary there, Sue Young, tonight. It'll be their morning when her day is off from her administrative job. <coughs> she's an <coughs> um, administrator. So um, she's been teaching herself all that is online to take over there. And we have um, the shareholding here in Rotorua, uh, office there, uh, with Moira Hoffman, Russell. We'll look after the share registrar of that company here. And we have other agents around the world who will work in this flag of jurisdiction. Um, I'll just uh, keep in touch with her. Yeah. 
Right, I just said making video explaining ambassador of this. So I'm just basically saying to Jamie, she's very good at picking up a lot of information. She has done this all along. It's over five years now, it might be a bit longer, uh, that has, she has been learning all about politics and um, generally um, of interest in law and uh, legal uh, situations of land and um, not so much in um, the political sense but in justice and um, bringing people together, peace and harmony and all of that. Um, so she's just changing accounts now. So that's how we work. We work together online with others around the world. Um, we have uh, Jean Odin in America, in Maine, Portland. And also we have um, um, Moira in Rotorua and also there are others around in other countries who are waiting but not officially in a title yet but they were would join in at some stage down the track we've got Daryl Payne has been very uh, supportive all the way through uh, in California uh, so I acknowledge him uh, for his um, um, commitment or dedication, put it that way, it's a better word for it, uh, in what beliefs he has in what we do, um, is making sense, common sense, really. But we're trying to figure um, the best possible way of um, making things clear uh, and spreading it through the world on being one entity. Cooperative sense, this, we're operating in a cooperative um, membership. So the more members we have, the better chances we have of uh, getting some um, um, equality in fairness all the way through the world in those 250 countries. Under the British government system of law, and we are the only native indigenous people who have the right to use the King's Acts 1830, 1837, uh, back then, on any um, threat to our business between us and Britain. It's still there. It's still there for our use. And I just want to make mention, I'm just trying to find the other bit. Um, okay, I'll do this one. Right, I'm just looking at the little article I put on. Uh, King William's 1833, brackets three and four will fall. That means uh, section 3 and 4 of King William's the Fourth Acts and I've pulled out these ones the valuation of lands Ireland Act 1832 C73 one. Vice Admiralty Courts Act 1832 C51 that's another one I've marked just the ones I'm concerned on this page Assess Tax Act 1833 C34 Act Bank Notes Act 1833, C 83, that's the Pound Note Bank Act. Bank of England Act 1833, C 98, and Buckingham Palace Act 1833, C 81. Those acts I just said, um, um, are pulled out that we refer to in this Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court as applied to the banknote, this green one, that we have online. The 970 million trillion trillion pound note levy debt instrument comes under those acts of King William IV. There's no acts in the world that can state that clearly. That we 
use those acts on anybody violating or breaking those acts. That's our business, private contract with Westminster. We haven't altered those acts. We haven't even used them yet. We're using them now on all the fraudsters between here in New Zealand, the Nidmaraya of Kingies, and Britain. Right? Westminster. The new Westminster, now that all the drones have gone out of it, into EU Parliament and congregated there and dispensed of. They'll destroy themselves inside there and the pedophilia gone out of Westminster and the House of Lords out. Out, out. That's my advice to the people in Britain. Get them out. By the time I get there with Jamie, they'll be gone. Saves the job of me nominating King Ernest Augustus into Westminster as your new king of England, Britain, UK, Hanover, Commonwealth of the World, and Moai Pacific Islands. There, I said, I've just made a statement under those acts I just said. Okay, apart from the Administration of Estates Act, 1833 C104 comes into this estates of King William IV inheritance to King Ernest Augustus IV through Queen Victoria Trust back to Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court and Chief King Tarua and myself, his sheriff, customary native indigenous legal advocate, assignee creditor, Levy creditor. There, that's in a mouthful. That's a legal sense. Everything we do is corporate. King. That's what my barrister said. Oh, why is it you more Moai's operating in a corporate sense? It's a king's corporate flag jurisdiction of admiralty. Court martial law, commerce. The Queen and John Key and America and Australia, Canada and Africa, all the Commonwealth countries are operating in the corporate system under Queen Elizabeth II and Queen Victoria. Okay? That's the difference between that corporate system and this corporate system. Right? Two corporates. That's what he's going that we're going to court, Kingy, you're watching this video, in total, and all the chiefs of Napoli. We're going to Auckland District Court with that in mind. To go as the King's Bench Court Corporations and Trusts Cooperatives versus the Queen's Bench Court Judge and his corporate trusts and corporations that Pope Francis destroyed. He destroyed them all. He destroyed them all. I'll see if I can find motu propria for you on my side. Um, there, it clearly states that Pope Francis wanted all the fraud and corruption of his Vatican laws stopped. The only way he did that was to get rid of all those laws and this Auckland District Court cannot legally use those laws against me, let alone the documents that Natalie Flower Dew Brown, Detective CIB, used on me. Okay? So that's um, going to come out. This is the instructions I'm giving to my barrister. You'll notice him and I speaking on the video. Clearly, he knew what I'm saying. And you, the people, are the judge of that conversation. Alright? Well, there's Jamie again. 
shared my post. Oh, she's still going strong. She knows I'm busy. And no, I'm calling Kingy. I oh, hear, I'm just, while I'm going through, I'm just reading Nicola Sturgeon, the first Prime Minister of Scotland. Sturgeon's Europe dream in tatters. Scotland will, will have to leave EU with the rest of UK. Dead. That's today. So I put a note there, post her off to Brussels with all the other elite rascals, you see, because they're all in that group of fraudsters and corrupted politicians that are getting caught, like Hillary Clinton, and the 23,000 emails that she says she didn't send any. This clearly marked C, C for classified confidential information is up on my website now. Now, this is how Obama uses abusing this flag of King William III. Martial law is this flag. Martial law, we can use the hanging rope on him anytime soon. Now, this is what he's doing. Executions by guillotine finally passed in USA and government is pushing for nationwide use. This is America, people, today. Executions by guillotine. Finally passed in the USA. And government is pushing for nationwide use. They passed laws in Georgia to allow for the use of guillotines. There. How evil is that? This is the, the panicking now. The panicking. Alright, the panicking because they're getting caught. <clears throat> um, vaccinations associated with dangers associated with vaccines vaccinations have been withheld from public for 30 years here are all the documents on Facebook so everything's coming out I'm trying to find my uh, motu propria uh, it's a long way back in my Facebook sites fill up very quickly Shameless Alex Salmon pockets huge £30,000 taxpayer grant despite earning £120,000 a year. He signed um, Gordon Brown, um, signed the Lisbon Treaty, but Alex Salmon supported the Queen in the EU Parliament and then backpedal. Backpedal to support going into back to Britain. Right, I'm just trying to still try and find this. Now I've got a lot of information put online um, showing a lot of corruption and fraud. Very much of it. France announces announces it will use guillotines on terrorists. So they've created the terrorists. Hillary Clinton is the author of ISIS. That's what Trump said, made a statement. Um, so there's lots of, this is the worst ever president in the whole world. Um, I still can't, I think I know how to get it. Hang on. I'm going to put that. I want you. I think I said it in another. Another video. I, I did say it in another video. Um, hang on. Jamie's really pushing it now. Um, put on her. She's very loyal, very good person, and I can only operate with honest people and people that care and believe in what I do. Um, can't find the most appropriate. No, 
missed it. Anyway, I'll do that in another video. Um, I wanted to read out multi propria, but basically it says to the, the oh, it's in my email. Um, I sent it to my barrister. So he's got to take note of what I'm saying in, in the multi propria that the judge cannot quote anything what the multi propria says um, as to its use against me in a case because he can bring it up as being violating that law. Um, no, I won't bother. I won't bother with it. I'll just um, dispense with it. It's all the letters I've sent, uh, emails I've sent to my barrister uh, with the most appropriate in it. I can't see it, but never mind. Um, that's all. That's all I, I should say on this video, so otherwise it get too long. Um, just to inform you that we are joining the law as it stands today in this flag that it is the most powerful flag in the world. I can proclaim that it is the most powerful flag of a king of commerce, law, of contracts, private contracts, banking in the world. Alright? Um, thank you very much. I'll let Kingy give me a call for a meeting with him and then we'll let you know what happened. Bye for now. John Wanna. Adieu.